Well, Dean, I know it's a, an obvious thing to say after five wins on the spin, but this must be a really vibrant place right now. Yeah, it is, but I said the same, you know, last two or three weeks, it's been quite a vibrant place. Uh, there's been a spring in people's steps. We've, we've got good players coming back to full fitness. Um, you know, uh, we're winning football games, but we're playing well as well. And the performance levels have been right up there. And that's the important thing. If you're going to win football games, the performance levels have to be good. And uh, on top of that, we're playing some really entertaining football as well. So we certainly need to continue that. And, you know, the, if anything, if the training session is anything to go by, then uh, that will continue. You'll have had a more thorough look at the, the Blackburn game since the weekend. What did you like? And maybe even more importantly, what do you think we can improve on in the coming weeks? Uh, what I liked certainly in the first half was the ball speed. I thought we, we moved the ball around at a real good tempo and it was very difficult you know, for Blackburn to live with us with the way we played. Um, you know, Tony said as much after uh, you know, in his, his post-match comments. We, he, made, he played Bennett in there to try and get some extra legs in midfield to, to cope with you know, uh, John McGinn and, and uh, Jack Grealish. And you know, as I said, I thought we had them camped on there on the edge of their 18-yard box. Glenn Whelan done a fantastic job against Bradley Dack, who I think is a really good player at this level. And, you know, um, a number 10 for them who provides and scores goals. He was ending up defending on the edge of his box as well. So really good to, to see the interplay, the movement off the ball was very good, but also the, the counter pressing to win the ball back as well. That was really good to see. Um, so that was the, the really pleasing thing. The things that we can work on is certainly our ball retention in the second half. I thought we tried to play a little bit safe, um, you know, put ball into areas and, and pack them areas where normally were, uh, you know, we build up from the goalkeeper. And I felt that we kind of went away from that, certainly for the last 20, 25 minutes and, and gave Blackburn far too much possession for my liking. Um, you know, but saying that, we defended it well and probably had the best chance with Tammy in the last couple of minutes where he could have put it to bed. I know you said you're very calm, very steady at all times, but do friends and family notice uh, a happier Dean Smith when, when you're winning? I hope not. Uh, I hope I'm the same when I go home. I try and put football to bed and, uh, you know, and go and spend time with the family. So I'm, I'm hoping that they, they see a, uh, you know, a dad, a husband, uh, and a friend. Um, that's what I hope they see when I go home rather than the Aston Villa manager. You know, the, we all know the pressures that being involved in football has anyway. Um, but I try to have a balanced lifestyle and uh, you know, hopefully I'm, I'm managing to do that still. Obviously seven games to go now. What's your overriding emotion? Is it excitement, focus, determination? A bit of everything. Um, Certainly focused, focused on the next game and, and you know, the, the one after that and then the one after that as you have to. Um, but I'm excited as well, you know, when you get 39,500 fans there on, on Saturday, we, which was fantastic. Um, you know, Blackburn brought a few, but, you know, obviously didn't fill that allocation and the noise levels, you know, certainly for the Wheelow chance. Uh, I did joke with him today, you know, I asked him, whether they'd seen him score a few more goals than I have because the keepers seem to want him to score or shoot every time he gets the ball from 30 yards out. But um, no, the chants were, were, were excellent and the, the support was fantastic on the weekend. I know it means a lot to, to everyone, but is it important to enjoy this part of the season as well, as well as, instead of sort of fearing it, go and enjoy it? Yeah, I, I want the players to be quite relaxed when they go out and play football. I want them to go and enjoy the football. Um, you know. I feel that the brand that we're trying to play, you know, players want to play that that way. Um, you know, the training sessions have been intense, they've been tough, but they've been been enjoyable at the same time. And I feel the lads walk off the training pitch knowing they've got something out of it and learnt something, um, which is important because, you know, every human being wants to come out of their workplace and, and feel like they've learnt. And every day they go, they come in. It should be a school day when they leave. And um, you know, I feel we're certainly doing that and we're certainly pushing the players. Obviously now up to fifth in the table. Do you even give yourself a chance to look at that or do you have to focus on each game and then just kind of see where the cards fall at the end of the season? Yeah, I think I've done too much of looking at a table early in the season and I've, I've gone past that now and just, just look at the next game now. Um, don't have time to look at the table. I know where we are. I know where the other teams are after their results. So. Uh, my focus and, and concentration is totally on the next game, you know. 
once the game's over, you know, congratulate the lads on, on what they've done and thank them for the hard work. Um, work out what we can work better on, but then, you know, full focus on the next game. Obviously, every game that comes up now, pressure cranks right up. Can you do anything to alleviate those pressure levels for the players, or do you like some managers might do? You want to keep those pressure levels high? I think being at a club like Aston Villa, you know, you, you look at the attendances that we've, we've had here, the size of the football club, the players understand the expectancy, you know, so they know there's pressure on every game that they play because of the following that we get away from home, the, the crowds that we get at the home games as well. So, you know, they have to learn to live with that expectancy. I remember, you know, uh, Alex Ferguson saying that when he goes to look for players, he looks for players who he believes can play under 76,000 fans. You know, we're the same here. We know the expectations. We have to deal with it. You know, uh, management, coaching staff, players. Um, you know, that's just part of our job and uh, we have to accept that and get on with it. Spoken in recent weeks about Tyrone Mings, Courtney House and Ahmed El Uh Can we focus on Neil Taylor and how well he's done for you? He's done really well, um, you know, because he's... He's had a few niggles along the way, um, you know, went, went away with Wales and um, had a sore, sore back when he came back and played through the pain barrier and I, I think he's playing very well. I said before, you know, we lost him after the West Bromwich Albion game away and, you know, we, we missed him for that period. Um, he's a natural left back, I think he's playing more aggressive. Um, he's getting in the, in the final third very well and his use of the ball has been very good. So. Um, he looks like a, a Premier League player again, playing in the, in the Championship for Aston Villa. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday coming up, what are you expecting with, with that one? Well, Steve's gone in there and they're, they're unbeaten so far. Um, you know, they've got good players. Again, they've got good players coming back from injury as well. You know, Forestieri was injured for a while. Hooper's coming back um, from injury as well. So they've got some really good players there. Um, and you can see they're, they're very organised. They've played some of the top teams. and you know, have come through that unscathed and, you know, they've got a big support. Um, you know, I've played there for part of my career and captained them and I know, you know, when that support's on your side, what a, a swing that can be. And, um, you know, it's going to be a challenge, but one we're looking forward to. Uh, Juan Pablo Angel and Martin Lawson were over here this past weekend, got a hero's welcome uh, from the fans. Uh, what were your memories of them in Claret and Blue and did you get to meet them at the weekend? I did, yeah. I was fortunate enough to meet both of them. Um, you know, great players and great servants for the football club. Um, you know, he had his own song, didn't he, Juan Pablo? And, uh, you know, he came to the training ground with, with Tails on, on Friday and I met him. And it was an absolute privilege to, to meet him. And, and then Martin Lawson after the game with his family as well. And I'm glad they got the reception they deserve from, from all the Villa fans there. They're well loved by by the football club, and um, you know it just shows that the past um, can be brought to the to the football club and be revered as it should be. Very finally, on that point, uh, does the fans' reaction offer an insight to the current players? What impact you can make in your career, and how your career can impact the lives of other people? Yeah, it certainly does. I mean, if the player, if our current players now see the sort of reception that you know. Um, the old players coming back get, then you know, you're, you're there to make your own history. And um, you know, we've got a long way to go still, but you know, if we could get this club back into the Premier League, then you know, they'll be coming back for years to come.